Every EV, including ours, has three circuits. A high-voltage DC circuit that drives the motor, a high-voltage AC circuit that charges the batteries, and a low-voltage DC circuit for the lights, radio, ignition, and so on. A normal gas-powered car also has a 12-volt circuit, and in those cars, it recharges via the alternator. An alternator takes mechanical energy and turns it into electricity. But in an EV, you don't use an alternator, because it's less efficient. You'd be taking power from the... <sighs> sleepy. You'd be taking power from the drive circuit, turning it into mechanical energy, and then back again. It's better to cut out the middleman and just use a DC to DC converter to get your drive circuit to charge your 12 volt circuit. Assuming that these big guys are probably the higher voltage in, and these ones are probably the lower voltage out. There's a fuse. I also have this. It looks like some kind of you can make your own connector thing. I think it just goes the other side of this. So we just actually have to wire these up to whatever we have coming into and out of it. While I worked on my new house, Kaylee, are you being bad? Looks like you're being bad. While I worked on my new house and Jason was unavailable, Dave was eager to work on the car solo, but he had trouble working and filming at the same time. But I thought I would just poke around a little bit with our DC to DC converter. If I do get it running, I will use it to hook up the battery pack to a DC to AC inverter and use it to actually run some kind of household appliance. These two are the positive and negative for the high voltage. These are the low voltage positive and negative, and this one I hope we don't need, but that's for the ignition apparently. I'm going to start with this little fuse holder. The brand is actually called Little Fuse, and there's a 10 amp fuse in here. It definitely hasn't been packaged enough. Bunch of different options for terminals. A spade terminal going this way, there's a spade terminal going that way, there's a screw. I'm probably gonna end up using the screw because that's easy. It doesn't look like it's marked for positive or negative, so I'll just pop it in. I guess it should be bi-directional. Everything's wired back up again. Battery bank is running again. Got it wired up for the motor and the controller. On the negative side of this contactor, it's going into this 10 amp fuse. It's going into the positive on the DC to DC converter. And then the negative's coming out going to the total negative of the battery pack. And then as an aside, I get to test our new modification that we've made to our pre-charge circuit. I flip this on, controller turns on. Let it sit for a second, then I'll be able to turn on this contactor. Our DC to DC should turn on when I flip this switch on. Turn off the pre-charge. Fan has not spun up. I guess I'll need to get the multimeter. The contactor's definitely on. There are not those in there, and we're reading nothing. Okay, I couldn't show you that on camera, but it is getting voltage in. Maybe something needs to be done with this green. All it says is green is accessory slash key pin. Found a diagram, not of bar charger specifically, but of a similar one that is written in sideways, and it says wire up that key one with the positive input. There's a switch there too. I'm probably not gonna bother with the switch. Based on my research, I've jumped these two pins. Recharge. Now turn the contactor on, pre-charge off, aha, that does do something. This is in for the time being, if I don't breathe on it, maybe it'll stay in. I think it's turned on, fan's not running, but I heard a clicky noise, so there's a relay in there that probably turned on. It's making 12 volts, let me see if I can get this on camera. Oh god, it's turned off again. God, that's such a piece of shit. Alright, it's on again. Tap this here, and we get voltage coming out of it. Now I just have to wire it up a little bit more reliably. <laughs> it just turned itself off again. I'm going to hit up the auto parts store, get some stuff to make this whole thing look a little bit more professional. This looks a little bit better than the rig I had before. I also picked this guy up, what everybody calls the cigarette lighter outlet. Cars don't really come with cigarette lighters, at least not North America anymore. But I'll wire that up to it as well, then we'll be able to run a test. Now we've got the other side of it rigged up. This negative for the cigarette lighter, that usually goes to ground. I'm putting it to the negative because that does exist on this circuit. This is the positive plugged into this power inverter. Tom and I once to use this inverter in my parents' minivan when we were kids to play a game of Warcraft over a crossover Ethernet cable between two ancient laptops. So this thing's got some stories in it and I'm glad it can still be part of stuff Tom and I are doing together now. This is theoretically wired up to work properly. Power supply, supplying the 12 volts. Pre-charge on. Main on, pre-charge off. Getting 12 volts to that, which means if I flip this switch, it doesn't turn on. I don't know, possible that this is just maybe too demanding? Unless these two wires are backwards. In order to reverse the polarity, I'm gonna shut everything down. It was not rolling just now, but I reversed these, I confirmed that it has positive voltage now. Plugged in the inverter, and still not doing anything, I'm not getting any power light. Okay, I've heard that cacti don't take nearly as much power. Let's see if it'll charge this iPhone 10. Now, that's not a lot of cactus power. 
This is very strange. The tester says we're definitely getting power out of it, but I'm not able to make that power translate into power that actually reaches a device. Thanks to the Acti being so old, we do have a real cigarette lighter. This will heat up the cigarette lighter. I can't see it, but it's quite hot. I almost burned my finger. So this is doing everything but powering complex devices. Also, for the sake of simplicity, I did try to use this USB adapter to power Jason's USB fan here. And that, unfortunately, still has not accomplished anything. This is all wired up fine. It's just there's some something that this device requires that it's just not getting. Jason made an important point, which is not very fun, but it does make sense. All this needs to do is charge our 12 volt battery because the 12 volt system will be running off of the 12 volt battery. I'm gonna test and see if it does that, but that's a lot less fun. All right, this fucking sucks. Okay, I'm not gonna film this. Okay, I don't have enough hands to show this, but the battery was charged to 12.54 volts, so I should be able to increase the voltage of the battery just by hooking this up to it. It's hooked up to the battery, and we'll see if we get any kind of charge. I charged it from 12.53 to 13.16 in just a minute, so this will do the job of charging the battery. While we're looking at the big picture of our car's three circuits, the charger circuit will be grounded to the chassis per its instructions. The car's DC drive circuit will not. If you ground the DC circuit to the chassis, you're asking to die. Now I know this channel has a lot of jokes and silly sound effects, and that part of the point of our channel is to give other folks the impression that converting a car to EV is doable, but please remember, our videos don't show the hours we spent researching this stuff and double checking our work. If you do this yourselves, our dumb YouTube videos should not be your only resource. At the end of the day, high voltage electricity can kill you, and so can any car. Don't ground your drive circuit to your chassis. And as always, if you want to help buy parts, check out the links in the description. This is great. Where did this come from? I've had it for a while. That's the tea, folks.